Welcome to Inside the Firm, a podcast dedicated to small business owners and hosted by entrepreneurs, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Each week, they take you on their journey of how to start, run, and grow a business by bringing you inside their architecture and real estate development firm. Get a behind the scene tour of how these business leaders manage their clients and foster company culture while creating new and innovative projects. And now your host, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Hey, how's it going, sick old Lance? Sick, deadly, <laughs> can barely, don't even touch me, stay away from me. Coming back Look from the, the other way from me, Lance. Coming back from the dead. Uh, if This is Lance speaking, so hopefully my voice sounds a little froggy today, so that way you can everybody can finally tell the difference between Al Gore and Lance's voice, uh, yes. because we've been told before that it's uh, we sound exactly the same, but yeah, it's yeah. been a rough week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody's sick. Yeah. For my son, too. He's puking <laughs> at midnight. Good for you. Then laying in our bed until we finally got to bed till at two because he didn't want to go to bed. And the only reason <laughs> we got to bed is that we soon found out that he crawled out of the bed and then shut the door on us because he was leaving to go do his own shit. He's got things to do. <laughs> I was like, you're going back in your crib. He's I got care. things to do. <laughs> Just <laughs> nice. Yeah. I like it. So, uh, yeah, I got a sick kid too. Same thing. Anyway, I got a story to tell. Did you? Please do. I got a little. <laughs> it's kind of the purpose <laughs> of the podcast. I got a little story to tell. I got a little sort of story to tell. So we've talked about vetting clients before, uh, several times on this podcast. We, what we used to do when we were slow and we had time to do it. I think that's one of the main issues is that we're so busy and just trying to grab as much work as we can right now. Because for some reason in Colorado, this is the busy point when everybody there's a lot of inquiries coming in. Um, and as I mentioned before, I think it's because people are done with summer, they sit in their house for a little bit, it's cold finally, and they go, I hate my house, I need to change it. Um, or, or they start thinking about planning about you know other yeah. things. Um, and then business always happens, right? So anyway, so we're super busy right now. Alex went to AU, and then uh, there was a, so he's even busier, right, during, during that week, and I had to take one of the meetings. So we had an inquiry from a, from a potential client, and um, had, a, had an initial meeting, and when I when I described the initial meeting and what occurred in it to Alex, he goes, "Oh man, that's a red flag. Yep, let's not take that." And know what's so funny is that this is where we had a preemptive what to do about a red flag before that meeting. So before literally I left the a- we- literally AU, the week, yep. I said we have enough business, and I go, Lance, here's the pattern, and you agreed, you echoed the same pattern, but here's the pattern: every client that tries to talk down the price, saying, "Hey, um, it's going to be," t- I I know what I'm doing. Uh, it's going to be cheaper. Can you lower the price? There was three of them in, in a row for me. One was an addition that we did. Turned out it, it was way more. One person was a big house. He talked it down. It, it, it's way more work. Like he is a lot, a lot of work. And then the third one, I didn't lower my price, but they wanted to. They kept asking in the meeting to lower my price. And I said, absolutely not. And then after I said, absolutely not, said, okay, good. And, you know, they signed it. They sent stuff and they go, we're going to need some handholding. We're new at this. So I go, man, I would have committed to lowering my price and then you would have wanted more. So I said, Lance, you know, this is a pattern. And you said, oh, absolutely. I see that pattern. I go, the next client that says that, the next client that wants you to lower their price or fights is too finicky. Tell them, hey, we've seen this pattern. What I'm learning from you because I, is that you're, you're telling me what kind of client you are. And the price just increased 5000 <laughs> And you were so jazzed about that. You were so jazzed about that. And I go, that's the right move. So I was away at AU. And then I think when I came back, you probably told me about this. And I go, yeah. okay, there's your client. Because we had enough work. I go, increase the price by 5000 right away. You didn't do that because you wanted to prove me wrong and beat me or something. That's what he's, that's what Alex that's what his theory is. He, he, here's what it... There actually was an increase. But it was in a, it was in a different way. So... I gotta, I gotta describe the project, the potential project, a little bit. Uh, so what it was was a, just a single family house that was um, a ranch style slab on grade, and this this potential client came into our into our office and basically had the floor plan all laid out. There was no big red flags with the layout or anything like that. But I've been down this road before where we're more of we're, we're acting like a an architect that's that's making sure everything is up to code. 
Um, we're also providing some some design insight, but but the design has kind of already started, and I'm okay with that because at the end of the day, we we we, we got to eat. So I was okay with all of that stuff. It was so it was so just about finished design wise that I go well. Normally, I would charge. I'm just going to throw out a number: ten thousand dollars for this. Um, but I'm going to add on the five thousand. So there was that metric that was added in. The other thing that I added in was because this guy he basically did come out and say that uh, he wanted to be handheld, right? So like, it just was all kinds of details that needed to be figured out. Um, he wanted to, he wanted uh, consultation during the whole construction project and access to some of the subs that we're using for ours. And so he wanted a detailed analysis of like his p- construction schedule and everything. So what I said, so what I added in was I added in a little a, a thing, a, a basically something that said if if we have a phone call or I'm checking on your stuff and it takes over five minutes beyond the init- the five meetings we have outlined in our contract, I'm going to bill to every six every six minutes. So every tenth. Of a uh, of an hour, right? Just like an attorney does. So I've I've had attorneys before. We've had it, Alex and I both have attorneys, and that's that's a lot of what they do is they build at the tenth hour. But to back up, <laughs> if I, I hope I'm describing a red flag to everybody, is like, wow, it, it, look at all the detail that you had to go into to try to satisfy this person outside of your normal business practice. Yeah, that should be a red flag. That should be a red flag. And then so somebody, to, to somebody the who well, second go, red flag. Go ahead. What do you think it is? It, w- that was just the first one. Sure. And then the second one was once they, once they got the contract, they sent you back addendums. Yeah. Well, that's actually the second red flag. There's three red flags. I would say actually the first the the first one is the first one is if a client comes to you and they are at the be- very beginning and they are already squabbling about and throwing out crazy ideas about this is one thing that's been driving me crazy a little bit is like thinking we need to change construction systems and somehow that's going to change that's going to save money and at the end of the day sticks are sticks like there that is just in Colorado I'm sorry two by six stud walls are the cheapest way to go and actually they're pretty damn damn efficient my house is a net zero house I can't tell clients enough about this like my house is almost a net zero house Yep. And it's traditional construction. We we over insulate a little bit. We have solar panels on top, and the or- orientation is orientation and, and solar shading. Where was it? And the reason why that's true in construction types is because of economies of scale. So, like, I can actually buy and get around, wrap my head around a non traditional building structure. But are we going to build a hundred of these? Because then maybe we can do it. So it's basically if somebody comes to you and is presenting themselves in a dichotomy of I need to be, I need, I, oh, I know everything. I have all the details figured out and I'm thinking about all the details, yes. but at the same time, I need my handheld. That is a red flag. That's what I'm trying to get across. Then there was, can I expand on that point? Yeah. Just because I'm interrupting now. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. It's all good. Now. Because I, I've heard that too is it, I really like engineers. I think they're, they're great, but sometimes they come to you. Oh, I'm an engineer. I'll even draw the plan. got this figured out. But then you can just see and tell. And it doesn't have to be an engineer. It doesn't have to be a lawyer. It could be anyone. It could be someone who's just, oh, I've built this stuff before, right? So it doesn't matter professional or trades. But just to picture it, oh, I'm an engineer. I got this figured out. And then you realize through discussion, like, you don't even know the common item. So, like, you think because you are maybe a smart person that you figured this out, but it's not good. And the the story I said to you that one of my guys said, and we've all probably heard is, oh, a plumber comes to your house to fix something at $85 an hour. If you want to watch Lance, it's $100 an hour. If you want to help, it's $125 an hour. Exactly. And so you, I hope everybody wrote that down. That is a perfect line to use. If Because I've, I've had clients, we've had clients earlier on in our career say, can, well, can I just come watch a draft? I'm like, no. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Damn. No, you can't. No, you can't. Um no, you can't. Unless you want to pay. You know, or, or, or like, <laughs> can we open up the design software and start moving around walls in a meeting? No, no, we can't. We can we can talk about how you want to move them, but we're not. You're not. We're not going to be micromanaged because it's just, it's just not productive. It's going to be cumbersome. It, it it sort of blend, blurs the line between who's the professional and who's the client. Yeah. Um, and that whole thing. So then the other big red flag is, and so I should have. I should have just. Um, we should have just walked away from the beginning. 
We should have just walked away from the beginning on this one. And I'd recommend everybody else, if they also see this, uh, have somebody like that come to them. Just walk away. It's not worth it. Even if you're starving, I don't know. The universe is going to somehow throw you a bone. It's going to yeah, happen, yeah. right? You just got to think positive. Well, th- yeah, that because of the second red flag, the first and the second one added on top. But then the third one was the absolute, like, it oh was man. nuts. It was nuts, yeah. So so what I did was I, I did our standard practice, and I said, you know, turn around a proposal within 24 hours, email you PDF. I walked him through our example proposal. It's been very helpful. I can't stress that enough. That was one of the best things we did this year, besides the videos, which are kicking yeah. butt. Um, so I, uh, sent him a proposal and then I got a four page long addendum written out and it was, it was craziness. It was absolute craziness, but I kept going down that road. <laughs> you know why? Cause I thought Al likes to say, Lance, you're difficult to work with. And I think Al is a little bit difficult to work with sometimes, yeah. especially cause he interrupts you. <laughs> <laughs> Like imagine doing a podcast. Imagine doing 87, 88 episodes of a podcast with him. And he interrupts you. How difficult that yeah. would be. <laughs> <laughs> team Al or Team Lance. Twitter now. Hashtag. Still can't believe Lumpy Potatoes won. Yeah. <laughs> People are crazy. Crushed it. <laughs> um, anyway, so I kept going down that road because I wanted to prove that, like, you know what? Maybe I am difficult to work with, but I can work with difficult people. <laughs> there you go. I, honestly, and plus one of our guys really wanted the project. One of our guys yes. really wanted the project, and it's it's clo- it, the this guy would have li- this particular client would have kind of been my neighbor, sort of been the, my, our, one of our employees' neighbors. It's in the neighborhood. I thought, what the heck? Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. We'll we'll get through it. <clears throat> so I entertained this addendum, and literally we went back and forth uh, three times with this addendum, both redlining it, both updating it. We finally got to the point of, okay, he, he actually the end, he ended up incorporating all of my comments at the end. It was perfect. It was actually kind of a really agreeable one. Like, okay, you understand if if we're going above five minute phone calls, it's gonna be billed and all mm-hmm. kinds of stuff like that, right? Where liability cuts off, where it starts. It was very detailed. I was actually pretty happy with it. Um, compiled it, sent off the deposit invoice. Uh, at the same time as the the um, the contract, or re- actually sent off the invoice, then sent the contract off. So an email like back to back, and then it exploded. <laughs> <laughs> and so he, uh, this this uh, this potential client got back to me in a phone call about two hours later. It was very very heated, um, and was kind of appalled that I would that I would send a retainer invoice. Um, But that's our standard practice, and we brought it up from the beginning. So moral of the story is I wasted between four and eight hours of my professional, and you could call it personal life too, I guess, uh, negotiating with trying to get through this for not a a high-revenue project um, when I should have just recognized the dichotomy from the beginning. So I hope everybody can learn from my lesson. Al already did learn from his own lessons, but Lance was stubborn. Yeah. Yeah. that last where basically they were very upset that you sent a deposit invoice and couldn't agree that that was standard practice, which means like you have the assumption that you are telling me who I've done this for 10 years, what standard practice is. That's not like cut it off there. Even if they're like, it took me a while to, I don't know. I was like, you cannot take this client, which yeah. you already knew. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Which, and so I'm glad we dodged that one. Yeah. It is what it is. So what do you got up next? You got Dodge, another story. Dodging more bullets. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to, I, I posted, I've been doing, um, how to be a successful entrepreneur parts on inside the firm Facebook page. Al should be retweeting them, but he's failing probably at that. Yeah, I should. You should, you should just, you should just go back. Are you to, po- posting them on Twitter? On it's Facebook, only- but you should just go screen capture my and tweet memes that. and then tweet them. Start at, start at one. That'd be awesome. Hashtag it and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It'd be great. So Look today, yeah, so today what I put down was um, how to be a successful entrepreneur, entrepreneur part 14, and that is buy as much insurance as you can possibly afford. Do and it. we heard that uh, from Jonathan Segal when we, when, when we first heard, started getting into him and, and all of his work. Um, that's what he said, too, is like you buy as much insurance as you, as you need or as you can afford because at some point you're going to get sued. At some point you're going to go into litigation or, you know, you're going to have to pull that E&O insurance because yeah. you can't, you can't catch every error and you, you can't, you literally can't catch every error and somebody's going to make a mistake. Um, it doesn't matter whose fault it is. The mistake was made. So we had a potential mistake, uh, 
that was made, and it was a rookie mistake. And so, but I I won't go into the details of it. But uh, we're gonna have to maybe we're gonna have to figure out and address it. And so, the way we I want to just make sure everybody you try to cover your bases, right? So, <coughs> double trick trip, double triple checking everything um, is good. But I think. One fundamental thing that everybody should should redo every single year, and I'm so glad we did this, and this is how we covered our bases, was our general notes. We had general notes that mm-hmm. had one sentence in them that literally might be our saving grace in this one, and that is that it, the, it, we impre- what it was is structural engineer structural drawings take precedence over architecture, and we had the structure right. We had a typo in the architectural. I think we're in good shape. Yep. We'll see, but... See, cover your bases. Like, no, you're not sloughing off responsibility. You're just tying the circle up all the way around. But, but here's what it's going to boil down to, because we talked about this a couple of days ago, is th- there's a possible error, and you could argue it either way, but, but we're going to take responsibility for it. So Lance is going to go out and meet with the client, right? We're going to seek a solution and propose a solution, right? One is low cost. Little less uh, utility. Now it's the this part is not as utility as it was before. They might accept it, just go with it, fine. We might have to split the cost. We might have to pay for the cost. Second one is even more cost, and we might have to pay for it, or we might have to do E and O. So, just is what it is, and we're gonna tackle it head on, and and yep. that's how you do it. We're gonna run at it. We've got too much of a awesome reputation, um, honestly, online to, to ruin stuff like that. Like I I just want to avoid. Anything less than a five star. Yep. And you want to know what this? I don't think this person will ever be a great reference for us. Even if we, you know, here's a problem. Let's say we take care of it. We pay for it all ourselves. The construction costs. We pay for it, right? I don't think it will be a good client. But he might be a bad client. N- not a bad client. He might do a bad review. Someone might ask us about it because we've had a couple of those in the past and say, "Hey, here was a situation. Here's what happened, and here's what we did. And if we did the right thing." then that person can be the judge. The new client yep. can be the judge and be like, okay, they still hate them, but I feel like they did the right thing there. So, yep. Yep. so again, uh, f- take responsibility, extreme ownership, yep. run right at the problem. You're going to have clients. You're going to have even consultants that call you with quivering voices because they're, they're literally shaking to their core, right? Because building a house for your first, for the first time or any kind of construction project, even if it's like a new business, like a little tenant finish, it's going to be one of the most stressful things they've ever done. I think it's like a top five thing. It's like divorce, right? Yeah. Or, or like a death in the family. So you need to be that rock. Yeah. Even if you don't know if you're right or wrong, it doesn't matter. Like, we're going to solve this problem. Yeah. We're going to solve this problem. We're going to run right ahead. I don't, I don't care. We're just going to figure out. We will identify who's problem, who, who screwed up, but we're going to solve this. Okay. Knowing that, you put perspective on it for me. Okay. This guy is building his own house. So everything is going through his head. He has the whole weekend ahead of him. I know that you're going to meet on Monday. Do you think it's worth it? Think about that psychology. Say, hey, we're going to talk about it Monday. We have two routes towards a solution. We don't know if this is going to work or not because we haven't been out to the site. That's why we're going to come Monday. But here is the way that we are thinking and send it to him so that he can mull over actual solutions over the weekend instead of riling himself up. I don't know this. I don't know either. Just put that. I think think it's not. I'll, I'll think about it. I'm not even going to answer it. Okay. You don't have to. <laughs> it's just a thought. Yeah, just a thought. Okay. <laughs> I, I got some stuff. It's about time. I'm tired of talking. My voice is almost gone again. Yeah. So in the beginning of the year, most podcasts, and I actually think that these podcasts are the funnest ones at the beginning of the year, is people lay out their goals, right? And there's two kind of ways to look at goals. The what to do, like what are you actually going to do, and then the how to do it. So right now, I kind of forgot what we said last year. Maybe we'll go listen to it. <laughs> But I'm testing a how I to... I know what mine was. Redo the contract and I did it. That was one of your... Nice. Um, one, one of mine is going to be how to do something. And right now, I'm testing a system that I can say, you know, in, in a month from now, hey guys, this is my goal is to keep... This is how I'm going to do this. And it's worked for the past month and a half. Or I'll say it didn't work. <laughs> so I need a, a new one, right? So I want to pre-emphasize test this. The second is what to do right? And this is, I'm literally having a question for you, Lance, because this is inside the firm. This has to deal with how we're going to run our business next year. Okay. So our guys are getting more and more involved in the business. 
do we give them a goal, a monetary goal? Say, this is where we were last year. This is where we want to be next year. And give that monetary goal and break it down. And I'll, I'll kind of explain it to you. But I want to really emphasize the importance of this is one of three goals, right? The number one goal should be <coughs> keep our culture. Be a great place to actually work. Because if we don't have that, if you only run towards a monetary and then you have a terrible time at work, it's, it's just not worth it, right? At all. So somehow you have to keep that, guys. We all have to. Number two, we need to exceed client expectations for two reasons. One, we have great reviews out there. And two, it is easier to read out, reach our monetary goal by, with repeat clients. They trust us more. Yep. They give us more leeway. If we exceed their expectations, they see value. Just the amount of investment you have to put in is reduced so much in just getting the client. I mean, because it's just a referral yeah. at that point. And I don't even know if saying it is enough. Like, it really needs to be ingrained into their souls that we need to uh, exceed expectations. Because if you just go towards a monetary goal, then you could say, oh, I just need to get this out because I need to bill and get my hours. And then you're ruining your, your f- future potential, right? So <clears throat> you know what our numbers are going to be this year. Yeah. And this is a stretch goal. So I tell guys, like, we don't know <laughs> if we're going to make it. <laughs> but but one of, our, one of our principles and one thing we talk about is be very tight on the feedback loop. Everything you do, we model like it gets built. So if we can be tight and show people what we want as a goal and people can see where they're coming at, that only gives them more resources. I need to pick it up. I need to do like, I need to make a better system. So <clears throat> here would be that goal, right? Right there. So think in your head about your firm, you a just big it? number amount. No, I don't <laughs> want to. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> right? Then I divided that number by 50 weeks because we normally take a week off in the summer and then Christmas, you know, like the new year is all this. And I want to tell them like at the Christmas party. Divide, okay. So, yeah. So, yep. so Al has a big number, uh, big uh, gross revenue number that he divided by 50 weeks. Yep. And then yep. it came out with a little number. Yep. <laughs> then it came out. Okay. We have this many people. We have, yep. We have seven people. So, we yep. divided that number by seven. So, that's how much everyone needs to do. And Ev- if, per week. Per week. So, somebody needs to generate that kind of revenue per week. Yep. Ah, that is a stretch. That is a stretch. Well, that is like uh, above productivity. Keep going, though. Well, look, and then I broke it into our hourly rate. It would exceed what we ask people to do in hours. Exactly. Yeah. Smart. Unless we go to this, which I've been transitioning our contract. So I know a higher hourly rate. And then that would mean this many hours. So that many convert that into days. Right. And then for principles, you know, at our hourly rate, how many days? And then somehow come up with an example like, okay, every week. You book out in two hours, an hour at the end, and it's part of your job now to where did I go for this week? Were these billable? Were these unbillable? You know, do we have deliverables? What do you, what do you, what do you think? I don't even know if we can reach that goal, but, like, isn't that part of F9 feedback loop? Like, I like it. I like it. What's interesting is, so I'm just going to play devil's advocate here. So as soon as you peel back the onion like this with an employee, and we already have, we already have one. We have oh. all of our guys are very smart. Yeah, but we do have one that's uh, that that already thinks business wise. Who's, who's coming back, and yep. <laughs> yep. he's already described to us, "Hey, I've already generated this much money for yeah. the F9." So as soon as you pull back the onion it's like then what's the incentive on the back end you know they're going to look at that thanks for asking this is what i'm going to say you know where how close we are to the end of the year numbers right so you can do the math and do the difference between that number and this number and i want to say the incentive guys if we reach this goal (coughs) i want to be like wolf of wall street without all the bad stuff going on but literally bring up the architecture profession in the game of compensation and everyone's bonus is twenty five thousand dollars yeah it, which is totally doable. You know what which I mean? Just, like, so just, just so everybody knows, like, the, the number he's showing me, I'll just give you a percentage-wise, is for gross revenue projection for next year would be a 25% increase for us, which is, which would be, which is, and so we could, we, this could happen. Like, yes. this could physically happen with yes. money. Yeah. Yep. But, but that would be, this is a goal, that's a reward. I, I like it. I like it. The tricky part about that is, is like, okay... Then Al and Lance have to really, really continue to be good salesmen, you know, and just vet the right people. We can't pick the wrong contracts. We got to be, we got to, the economy's got to keep going well, which I think it's, I think we got another good year. Yep. Um, in Colorado. We, I have to land at least one or two more big, big projects. I know. And the way, like, uh, uh, the big projects are tricky. It's so funny. You're like, they're like the unicorns, aren't they? 
to me, I'm just like, it's hard for me to imagine getting a big project. And then all of a sudden, once it gets presented to you, then you're like, oh, yeah, that was uh, that was there. It was going to happen all along. Like, whatever. Yeah. Little ones. I'm like, yeah, that's always going to come in. Yeah. But well, that big one, the big one that we're on now. I don't know if you remember. But you probably do. Like, that took a while. That took oh, a while. Oh, it took a long time. Yeah. yeah. And I have, a, I have a couple in the fire like that right now, too. Yeah. So. So, you think we should do it? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's interesting. Let me think about it. Yeah. I got to think about it. Maybe after I have a glass of wine tonight, I'll be more co- coerced into it. Yeah. I can't, I'll share you the, the doc. It's Get interesting, though. I like it. I like it. That's for sure. Because then, I mean, here's the worst case. We don't hit it, but we realize, I, I think we'd realize what projects we're doing good at, how many billable hours versus unbillable hours, how making these systems matter. And, and the other thing, too, like, we really have to emphasize, okay, at sometimes we aren't, we might not make that because we want to exceed client expectations. And we also have the dual responsibility of like, we need to protect our ASS, meaning good details, great design, all that. And that goes with exceeding expectations, not only on design, but like on the construction side. But that really, it, it, it's like these are imposing forces. And then if those forces oppose, I don't want it to kill the culture. So, Maybe it's an experiment where, hey, it's too much pressure. It is, it is destroying. We're not going to meet it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. But it seems like it's a very clear goal. It seems like it's a feedback loop that's important. But, yeah, I like it. I like how it's broken down. That's for sure. Yeah. So, what do we got next now, Gore? Uh, we have our bestie with Nick Reeds. Hello, best friend. I hope you all had a great week this week. A reading. In an essay entitled, Building, Dwelling, Thinking, Martin Heidegger wrote, Living among things is the basic principle of human existence. Which I understand to mean, we are never in an abstract world, but always in a world of things even when we think. And once again, Heidegger. The relationship to man, to place, and through places, to spaces, is based on his dwelling in them. The concept of dwelling, understood in Heidegger's wide sense of living and thinking in places and spaces, contains an exact reference to what reality means to me as an architect. Peter Zumther, Thinking Architecture. A question. Die Hard or National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation? Toodles! Easy. National Lampoon's. We've probably watched that four or five times already this winter season. You and your wife? Yeah. <laughs> Atlas loves it. Does he really? That and then um, what, why is he just? I don't get it. Like, does he just? He really likes it. Like, he looks at it and like he likes it. And then what's the one with Tim Allen, where uh, like his daughter goes on vacation and oh, Christmas with the Cranks. He calls both of the, those movies the guys. He goes the guys, the guys. <laughs> why? Because the they're... guys. <laughs> just, just. All uh, right. I don't know. We don't know. Yeah, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Thank you, God, for that movie. There's a National Lampoon's. There's a new one. Just it's the vacation where they go to Wally World that they remade like a year ago. It's actually pretty funny too. It's not the worst. No, I watched it. It's not bad. Yeah, yeah. They do a pretty good job following along to all those. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Finally, we all agree on something. Wow. I want to know what Nick thinks though. What does he mm. like? Die Hard. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Everybody forgets that. At least I do. I mean, it doesn't come to mind right away. But it, Die Hard's good. But it's not. It's not. It's not uh, Uncle. There's no Uncle Eddie. I don't Come know on. if it's yeah for a two year old. Yeah, <laughs> oh, problem <laughs> yet. Yeah, wait till he's four. Yeah. There you so, go. There you go. So should we bring the guy, the guys in for Airy Jeopardy? Bring the guys. Bring the guys. All right, you guys ready? Question number one: What is the max driveway slope? A, 12%, B, 3%, C, 12 degrees, D, 14%. <laughs> <laughs> so 
<laughs> it should be an easy one. <laughs> You're such a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I did not write this. All I did right. not write this. D is the correct answer. <laughs> Everyone gets <laughs> Great job. Never forget it. <laughs> I actually, I thought, I thought uh, Bark was going to say collusion, collusion. <laughs> <laughs> two, <clears throat> type two construction, which is building elements of non-combustible materials, allows for a more building stories and area than type one. B. Less building stories and areas areas than type one. C, <coughs> equal building stories and areas than type one. D, less building area than type three. E, which Lance added because I didn't add this, fourteen <laughs> percent. <laughs> I did not add this. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> type two construction, uh, which is non combustible material. Thank you. Is a allows for a more building stories and area than type one. B less building stories and area than type one. C equal building stories and area than type one. D less building areas than type three. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? B, B, B. You guys are all correct. You guys are all winners. Wow. I got the tough ones, huh? Yeah. We're all tied up. We're all tied up. Number three. <coughs> what are tiny air bubbles that are incorporated into mortar or concrete during mixing to resist freezing known as A, air infusion, B, entrained air, C, air insertion, D, airy boy? It should be <laughs> a tricky one. Uh, just the answers? Okay. A, air infusion. B, entrained air. C, air insertion. D, airy boy. What do we got, gentlemen? We have B, B, and B. That is correct. Wow. Crushing it. All right. Number four. A compression test of hardened concrete that has been cut from the structure is known as A, concrete test. B, core test. C, camp sample core. D, concrete testy boy. Number four, a compression test of hardened concrete that has been cut from the structure is known as A, concrete test. C, sorry, A, concrete test. B, core test. C, sample core. D, concrete testy boy. What is the answer, gentlemen? C, A, B, the correct answer is B. Jason is the winner today. Wow. Congratulations. Four for four. Four there for four. There we go. There we go. You know why it's a core test, too? I don't know. I'm just going to make something up. All right. For all you listeners out there, Christmas is coming up. So buy everyone you know, regardless of their age or what their profession is, the creativity code on Amazon. Just buy 10 of them. Uh, that's a book by Lance and I. We're, we're sure you like it. If not, I don't know. That's on you. <laughs> I was, I, I was going to be a little more cordial and say maybe it, it counts as a coaster. I don't know. It could be a coaster. <laughs> could be a coaster. Um, I don't really know if there's a return policy on books. It's not that much, so don't even worry about it. Uh, Revit Rocket Ship is great for learning Revit. There is a guarantee on that. If you do not like it, you can get your money back. But go to Revit Rocket Ship if you want to learn Revit. That's all I have, Lance. All I got is uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Please, if you haven't already, leave us a five-star review. If you're thinking about leaving us a one-star review, just put five stars right on top of that. You can go into your app and just do it uh, directly from there.